assalamu alaikum uh, in today's lecture we are going to find the inductance of a conductor due to internal flux there is inductance also due to external flux uh, but that will be covered in the next lecture firstly uh, we are considering a conductor uh, a long cylindrical conductor long cylindrical conductor and uh, we are also ignoring the return conductor or you can also say that you are considering the return conductor at infinity or very far away from the conductor that is in this picture and why we are considering return conduct return conductor at infinity because we don't want any interaction magnetic field interaction between the two conductors no magnetic field interaction between the conductors so in this uh, particular figure uh, this is actually the cross sectional uh, view of the conductor what we are doing uh, firstly we are only consider considering a portion of the conductor till radius x the whole conductor has a radius r but we are, what we are considering that uh, the portion of the, condu the conductor which has radius x is under consideration at the start of uh, this uh, derivation there is a tubular element that we are also considering and uh, this tubular element will be used when we have to calculate the flux or flux linkage so there are two other elements like this ds this is the length element and this dx it is actually the width element or you can also say, say that this is a thickness element so uh, at the start of the derivation what we are considering is a portion of uh, conductor which has a radius x and a tubular element whose thickness is dx and a small portion or small part of the tube whose thickness is dx but the length is ds so now uh, the main goal of this lecture is to find the inductance and for inductance we have to find the flux linkage and for flux linkage we have to find flux and for flux we have to find magnetic field density and for magnetic field density we have to find magnetic field intensity so we have to start from an equation which should have a relationship between magnetic field intensity and current right so starting from ampere circuital law which has a relationship between the magnetic field intensity and current but before that before going towards ampere circuital law uh, we have to define it so by definition ampere circuital law is actually it actually says that the magnetic uh, magnetomotive force in ampere turns around any closed path is equal to the net current in amperes enclosed by the path so uh, magnetomotive force in ampere turns around any closed path is equal to net current in amperes enclosed by the path so in this example the enclosed path is a circle at distance x so this particular circle is the enclosed path and if i have to write it in in the form of mathematical equation then this is the closed integral of magnetic field intensity dot dl dl is the length element and is equal to i x i x is the current that is enclosed by the that particular path closed path so we are considering the conductor till length x so the current that is enclosed by that path will be i x a small portion of the current or a portion of the current till point x till radius x 
in the conductor so there are two assumptions that we are making the first one is the magnetic field is concentric so it is all around the conductor in the form of circles and it is symmetrical and symmetrical means same so if the magnetic field is same then this hx will be constant and if it is constant so we can take it outside the integral so the term will become this equation will become integral d s is equal to i x and the close integral value will be 2 pi x is equal to i x right so this is the equation with that we got starting from the ampere circuit law now we have to find uh, the actual inductance of the whole conductor but in the conductor actually the current that is flowing through the conductor is i but in the equation what we are considering is ix so this is a small portion of the current that we are considering so we need an equation in which there is a relationship between the portion of the current that we are considering and the total current of the conductor uh, so we are making a, an in assumption that uniform current density is existing in the conductor so current density uh, by definition the current density means that uh, the current per unit area is same so we can write it j is equal to i over pi r square and if the conductor radius that we are considering is r this is i i is the total current through the conductor and if i am considering a smaller portion or smaller area then I for example in this case we have x radius so pi x square the current flowing through that portion will be i x so these two values will be same because we have uniform current density and from this equation we are getting i x value i x is equal to pi x square over pi r square over i so actually this equation is just telling us that the current is just a portion of the current and that portion is defined by the ratio of the conductor size that we are considering so pi x square is the area of the conductor that we are considering for this derivation so for the starting point of the derivation and pi r square is the area of the whole conductor now uh, we found out the value of i x and if i replace this value in this equation the final equation for the magnetic field intensity h x that will be x over 2 pi r square r is the radius of the conductor x is the radius of the conductor that we are considering and i is the total current and the unit is ampere terms per meter right and we know that the magnetic field density and magnetic field intensity they are related to each other through constant mu and mu is the permeability constant And this permeability is defined as, uh, if I have to define the permeability, it is actually the measure of magnetization that a material obtains when there is a magnetic field that is applied to the conductor. So permeability is actually the measure of magnetic uh, magnet magnetization of a certain material that is obtained when a magnetic field is applied to any of the conductor. And by mu, we know that mu is equal to mu r and mu naught and mu r is the relative permeability and mu naught is the permeability of free space and the value of mu naught is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 henry per meter and usually the mu r value is 1 <coughs> so the magnetic field density is related to magnetic field intensity through a constant mu and we have found the value of magnetic field intensity we can replace it here in this formula and we also know that magnetic flux is equal to magnetic field density into area so magnetic field passing through a certain area is known as magnetic flux but in this case we are considering a small portion this portion which is under consideration right so we have to find the flux through this small area right so uh, with the magnetic field that is passing through this small area will tell you about the magnetic flux so 
by the generic formula we know that phi is equal to b a and if small portions are considered we can write d phi is equal to d phi is equal to b x because we are considering a small portion of the conductor into d a and now d a can be replaced by d x into d s this is your thickness element this is your length element and in all the uh, derivation that we are considered till this point the derivation that we have done this till point we are considering all the values per in per meter so per unit length so we can take this ds length element as one meter as well so this da can be replaced by dx so the formula for d phi is bx dot dx there is ds here but the value of ds is one so we can write it uh, write it as d phi is equal to bx dot dx right and we have already find the bx value so we'll put it here and the final formula in terms of d phi and dx will be d phi is equal to mu xi over 2 pi r square dx now uh, d lambda d lambda is actually the flux linkage and uh, the generic formula for lambda is lambda is equal to n phi so it will tell you about the amount of flux that is linking with the region uh, with the portion that we are considering so this is the portion that we are considering so what will be the flux linkage with this portion so in this term this n will be equal to pi x square over pi r square so there is a current value in this d phi right so the flux that is being produced by the current that is inside the portion of current a uh, portion of conductor that we are considering for example we had this conductor that is under consideration whose radius was x the current that is passing through this particular portion of the conductor is i x the current that is passing through the whole conductor is i so the flux that is produced by i x is d phi and this i x is a portion of the total current and what is that portion that is t pi x square over pi r square so it is defined by the ratio right so this is the ratio of the current or the portion of the current which is producing d phi so d lambda is equal to pi x square or pi r pi r pi will cancel out and it is it will be multiplied by d phi we already know the formula of d phi from the last slide this is d phi so we will put put it here and this is the formula of flux linkage for that particular portion the smaller portion that we are considering right now and uh, if i have to find now the flux linkage for the whole conductor then we have to integrate it from 0 to r r is the radius of the conductor total radius of the conductor so i will uh, the variable inside the integral is x so if we will integrate it you will get the value mu i over 8 pi weber turns per meter right and we know that mu is equal to mu naught into mu r mu r is equal to 1 mu is equal mu naught is equal to 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 entry per meter if i'll put this value here the value of flux linkage total internal flux linkage that will be i divided by 2 into 10 raised to minus 7 weber, per uh, weber turns per meter and the inductance value will be lambda over i so this i will be cancelling out and the value of inductors due to internal flux will be 1 over 2 into 10 raised to minus 7 henry per meter thank you